Hello everyone. Today we're going to be going over how we know the area of a circle formula. This might seem useless for learning the trigonometry part of further pure math, but as you will come to see, it's a really essential part of the intuition for things like the area of a sector. So, we know that the area of a circle, A, is equal to pi r squared. You might have learned this before in your early schooling or whatever, but and that's how it is. And I'm going to try and explain to you today a few methods of figuring this out. So the first method is by triangles. All right, so this method basically involves cutting up circles into really, really, really small pizza slices. So say you have a circle here and you cut it up into eight pieces. Then you arrange those pieces in a way so that they almost form a parallelogram. Each piece has a height r and some, or each piece has side length r and some um, sort of base length that, well, it's the circumference over eight, because we're sliding, uh, slicing it up into eight pieces. So it'll look something like that. So this is what I say when I mean arranging the pieces into a parallelogram. Every line here has the length r, and all the bases here, all the bases here, are of equal length, the top is equal length to the bottom, and they add up to the circumference. Now, however, this is obviously not a parallelogram and it doesn't help us. But what we can do, if we go into the world of the infinite, so say we sliced up this circle into 64 pieces, and the lines here are too many to count. We slice up a circle into 64 pieces and obviously you'd get something a lot denser and the bases would be much less protruding the top would be very much a flatter shape and this would be more towards a rectangle than a parallelogram but it's still not perfect so what we end up doing if we slice our circle up into infinitely many pieces and we arrange them in this manner like we've done before, we get an infinitely dense parallelogram or a rectangle even, since this angle gets closer and closer to 90 degrees. So it goes to 90. So this is all things that happens as it gets to infinity pieces. So these angles go to 90 degrees. And then next, this height of the rectangle, as the pizza slice of the circle gets infinitesimally thin, it'll be more and more vertical. The, rate, the, the side of length r will become more and more vertical until it is vertical. And so the height here will be an r. And on top of that, the distance from the top here to the center of the base here is also r anyway. So you can take the height of this to be r. And finally, if we remember what I said in, at the very beginning, that obviously the, base, the bases of these slices all add up to the full circumference. So if say this is side, um, it's it's a length, so we'll say it's L1. We know that all of these bases of the pizza slices must add up to C. So L1 plus L1 is equal to C. And then say C is the circumference of our circle, right? We know the circumference is 2 pi r. So 2 times the dimension here of the rectangle must be 2 pi r. 
or the length there must be half the circumference because it's split evenly, the whole circumference is split evenly between this side and this side of the rectangle. So our dimension L1 is pi r. So if you want to take this area of the rectangle, which will be equal to the area of the circle, you'll get a is r times pi r, which is equal to pi r squared. All right, so that's one way of proving that the area of the circle is pi r squared. Another way has to do with taking infinitely many concentric rings from the very middle of the circle. So, say you have this circle here, and let's put a dot at its center. So, fact, the circumference of the circle, or of a circle is always 2 pi times the radius of the circle. So that means, say, if you plotted a graph of circumference versus radius, you would get this straight line here with the gradient 2 pi. So now if we go back to this circle here, say we have a circle of radius 0, it's just a dot, and so you just get the dot here. But then say you keep adding rings, and these rings are going to be infinitesimally small and we add like five of them, for example, or say we go back to this circle, we split this circle up into rings. For example, the ring in the middle is going to be half the radius because it's halfway between the very center and the very outside of the circle, and so it's going to be half as long as the, as the outer circle. So this is like the, when you unroll the center ring. It's so like if this is the end of the graph here, say that this is the radius, like, and this is the length where you, when you unroll the center ring or the halfway ring, or if there's a ring at three quarters of the way out, for example, then if you, un if you were to unroll this ring, it would be something like this. Or just a quarter of the way from the center to the outside. It would just have a quarter of the circumference of the whole circle. It would be something like this. And if you're taking infinitely many of these circles from the center to the very largest circle which encompasses all of them, you will get first at first nothing, and then something. And this will go up continuously, unrolling every single ring that makes up the circle. And you'll find that if your rings are infinitely thin, Say if you had only two rings, and it was like that, then this is kind of bulky and unable to go into an actual uh, graph format. But like, if you have infinitely many rings, you will approach the real area of the circle, because you'll get more and more accurate as the width of the rings get smaller. And once you have infinitely many rings, they will increase at a constant rate of 2 pi times the rate at which the radius is increasing. And so, like, you, when you stop this sort of graph at the outermost ring, the outermost ring being the circumference of your circle, it'll have a length of 2 pi r. And you know the ring at the very beginning of the circle has a length of zero, so this is kind of a point here.
where it meets this line. So all you have to do now, since you know that every when you unroll every ring and stick them next to each other in order of size, you'll get this kind of triangle shape. Since you know that the distance from the thickness from the innermost ring to the outermost ring must be equal to the radius of the circle, you get this triangle here, which is of base r and height 2 pi r. So the area would be half times base times height, or the area would be half times r times 2 pi r, or it would be pi r squared. And that's the second way. So finally, um, if you are in like, if you're very familiar with integration already and you're just watching this video for review, you might notice that the area is the integral of the circumference with respect to r. Like, 2 pi r with respect to r integrating becomes pi r squared from the power rule. And you might notice that that's where the area of the circle has a kind of relation there. It's kind of a relationship between those two values. But, yeah. So... If you take infinitely many of these small rings and put them together in this triangle, once you've unrolled them all, like, say you have a circle made of three rings, and then this is what it might look like unrolled halfway. And then when you unroll it the full way, it might look like this. And it would make a straight line with a gradient of 2 pi. So that's basically what I mean when I say unrolling the rings. But then you unroll the rings, you get this triangle with r and height 2 pi r because that's the largest ring or the circumference. Then you find the area of this triangle, and that's the area of the circle, pi r squared. All right, so this intuition that I've given to you from this, uh, from both of these methods of finding the area of a circle actually is very important to understanding the area of a sector because the area of a sector is basically based off um, what fraction of a whole circle it is multiplied by the area of a circle. So I find this to be just useful to know about when, when you're trying to understand the area of a sector. All right, so next time, of course, I'll be talking about the, the area of a sector and how we get that formula. So thanks for watching.